It's a holocaust of the Palestinians. And the big shame is that we, the Jews, are doing the same thing that was done to us. When Dad told me about the Michelin Guide idea, you kind of, your head slightly goes into your hands and thinking, oh, Dad, you know, can't you just keep out of trouble for once? The ground tour of the Palestinian Holocaust. I knew this will catch people's imagination. I it was quite funny, to be honest. Something typical of Shimon. A joke, but with a political message. He decided he wanted to show, in a humoristic way, a very important thing about the situation of the Arabs in Israel and the way the Israeli government deals with, with them. It's very amusing, with kind of Swiftian ideas. How do you visit prison in Israel? First of all, you have to be, be an Arab, because otherwise they won't let you in, and this kind of thing. I cannot open my mouth in Israel. No newspaper will publish what I have to say. I am living here for over 30 years, 35 years, something like this. I am actually living in Israel all the time. They will say you are anti-Semitic. But by not criticizing Israel, we actually give them a free hand to do whatever they like. And they really do whatever they like. They kill people. You can say whatever you like. But after you said whatever you like, they do to you whatever they like. This is democracy. When we conquered the West Bank, and all the country was so happy that we conquered the West Bank, and I thought this is a disaster, because it will bring all the troubles of conquered places, like we have seen elsewhere. And I published an ad in the paper I worked for in Haaretz, against occupation. So people on the street said to me, if you don't like the occupation, why don't you go and live elsewhere? So I came to London. Now I am in London, and I'm criticizing Israeli policy, and some Israelis tell to me, if you have something to say, why don't say it in Tel Aviv? <laughs> No, well, I, there was no one living for the He was an artist, a painter. That was his profession. He became a journalist. And he wrote very funny sketches. Then he went for arts. Uh, they paid him a trip around the world, and he went to Japan and China and God knows where else. Uh, and he wrote very, very entertaining pieces. To a whole generation of Israeli children, he is very well known because of his children's books. We had a meeting here um, about a year ago with lots of anti-Zionist young Israelis. And uh, suddenly one of them heard that Shimon Tzaba was here. And she was overwhelmed with emotion. She said, I must touch him. He was my, uh, uh, I loved his books. Um, he, he, the one, you mean the one who wrote to Zbarendi? The hero, you know, it's one of his children's books, which is probably the most famous, but he wrote some others. And uh, he, she was overwhelmed, you know, with, with joy. 
he was a cartoonist. He had his column. People didn't leave Israel. Uh, people didn't travel much. At the time when Shimon left on his great voyage, I mean... Oh, several. I mean, India, and, Japan, and, and Africa. He, you know, he, he traveled a lot and, and wrote about it. Yeah, we, we, we read it, you know, with thirst about, you know, something about, about the world, something to, you, you know, so exotic. And uh, he, he, he's done it for, for us in, in his own way. I think he calls it my life, my autobiographical painting. Starting from the bottom, there's a, a, a basket with mushrooms, which represents his uh, interest and expertise in uh, mushrooms and fungi. He's a mycologist, as well as a, a, an expert on cooking of mushrooms. And then there is the scientific American. He follows all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, science interest as, uh, as an amateur. There's a microscope, of course. There's a Hebrew newspaper with a picture of Yasser Arafat. And the title says, The Murder of Children Continues. There's a, an a ashtray full of cigarettes which represents his addiction. He had to stop smoking because he, he can't breathe very easily now. At the top left, there is a, a picture of, of an actual picture which he made. I think it's a collage which represents his art. What is missing, I think, what is here is his uh, poetry and, and, and writing, uh, prose and poetry, his uh, satirical. Well, I mean, he, uh, a newspaper may also represent his journalism. Shimon is enormously impish, swifting kind of character, and he has incredible ideas that come out, out of nothing. He said he wants to, to write an Arab cookbook. So I, said, I said to him, but you don't know anything about Arab cookbook. Yes, he said, but I have a title. A million flies can't be wrong. <laughs> When you ask young Palestinians now, kids mm. in anywhere, where do you come from? Say from Rafa, they say the names of the villages, yeah. either in Palestine or they Italy. insist and they insist on it. We are radical, anti-Zionist Jews, Israelis. In fact, technically Palestinians, Jewish Palestinians, all of us. My birth certificate says Palestine in English, Arabic, and Hebrew. So, I'm a Palestinian Jew, and I became anti-Zionist. Dayam, he both speaking Palestinian. Now, this is how I define myself. I was a Jewish terrorist in Palestine. I was shot at by a British soldier. I was lying on the floor, pitch dark. And he was looking at me and he shot at me like this. And he didn't hit me. He is reputed to be the only Israeli who had been a member of all the three different underground organizations pre state, pre 1948. All I got was a bullet in my foot. And I was jumping on one foot. For two years, I got free shoes from the Israeli army for the next six, seven years. I got 2,000 pounds compensation for the injury. And with this money, I came to London. When I published this Israel Imperial News, Israeli student in London wanted to talk to me, why am I, am I doing this, you know? So the embassy made a meeting in a Swiss cottage somewhere, there is a Jewish club, and I came and there were a lot of people, Rami, met me there. And I was asked, why do I do it? So I explained to them why I do it. 
in the end of when the question time came, one said, who gave you this money to do this treacherous job? I said, Ministry of Defense. They paid me $2,000, which was absolutely true. I put it in the money. One of his other uh, sort of uh, satirical pieces of art was an Israeli flag, which, as you know, has got two um, horizontal light blue stripes on my background with the Star of David in the middle. And he replaced the Star of David with uh, the outline of a tank. Simple, but effective message, I think. The first thing he did when he arrived in the UK was to write this book, which was called The White Flag Principle. And it was essentially written in the form of a military manual, except not for a victory, but for defeat. You know, his argument was it's actually much better to, um, to lose a war than to win one. The manual consisted of very practical advice, not how to evade capture, but how to be captured by the enemy, you know, and different ways of giving yourself up. What surprises me is that his passion for trying in his own small way to make Israelis see sense and to make the Middle East a peaceful region with equal rights for everybody isn't diminished by his age or his health. I think, if anything, that the desperation of the political situation is what drives him. Things aren't getting better, they seem to be getting worse. If people think that Israel is wrong, they can do certain things to put pressure on Israel. For example, they can boycott Israeli products. They can boycott Israeli festivals. We treat the Palestinians something between a human and a sheep. In my eyes it's so terrible that I am ashamed to be a part of this ethnic group. He's very cynical, very, very cynical. And he doesn't like, especially politically speaking, he doesn't like bullshit. He doesn't like bullshit. I mean, uh, he cuts, he cuts into the real stuff. One and only is a radical thinker. Oh, here he is. Shimon. I grew up on, on Shimon books for toddlers, man. What is my agenda? I cannot tell you because I am a, I'm a, in the end of the day, I'm a secret agent, you know. But, but uh, many people think that I work for the Mossad, actually, you know. And you can see that they don't, this, they don't pay well, you know. But, uh, but, but uh, this problem starts when you say what you think, when you try to be genuine. Then you become an anti-Semite, a new historian, a Holocaust denier, and if you happen to be a, a J yourself, you become a self-hating J. Hello. Hi. Hi. Been huh? really? nervous. Huh? I was nervous yesterday. Yeah. I think your lecture was absolutely stupid. <laughs> this is a... Uh, <laughs> <absolutely laughs> very provocative. It was not even anti-Semitic. It was just stupid. That's stupid is not... I can prove it to you. If you would have said the same thing, yeah. but instead of J and Muslims, yes. or P, bold people, if they are getting a compliment, they are very happy. But if you say bold people, are bad people, they don't like it. It's not that simple. To tell you why, to tell you why... This is what you said. Yeah, but I tell you why it is not completely true. Why not? Because if you say, for instance, the Jews are very clever, nobody complain, yeah? Yes. If you say, the German 
people are very clever. You become a, a Nazi racist. No. Sorry. Stupid. No. See, I know that you <laughs> hate the Jews. Well, it's I don't hate the Jews at all. Why are you talking about them all the time? I try to understand them. Ah, you don't try to understand them. For sure I try. No. Yeah. It is the other that defines me. <coughs> to be a Jew is to be defined by the, the other. Therefore, I need your hatred. As soon as the Zionists arrived to Palestine, they realized the, the situation, they turned the Palestinians into the new going. So they were defined by their conflict with the Palestinians. And this is the reason that they have to maintain the, the conflict. Unfortunately, Zionism that started as a very, very marginal, a marginal Jewish movement is now the voice of the Jewish people. And I'm very, distur I'm very disturbed by it because I think that uh, uh, first it is the Palestinians, and second, all those silly wars that you and I, I'm British now, are involving, you know. We are fighting now the last pockets of resistance to Zionism i.e. Iraq, soon Syria, and Iran. I was born in Jew. I never chose it. I don't have to apologize for it. I could have been born Eskimo or a camel, or whatever. So this task is not a, a personal problem. Dear Mr. Zaba, we act for the Michelin group of companies. Enclosed is a picture of the front cover of a book entitled Much Better than the official Michelin guide to Israeli prisons, jails, concentration camps, and torture chambers. You must realize that Michelin couldn't tolerate the use of their trademark and their logo on your book. I didn't care. What I wanted is that the public will pay attention to what Israel does to the Palestinians. This was much more important than the feeling of Michelin. Look, assuming that somebody in 1941 or 42 has doing a similar thing to avoid the Holocaust of the Jews by the Germans, would have Michelin also object to it and make a court case against I think my duty as an Israeli, as a somebody who was born there and brought up there, to fight against injustice. And this is more important than to keep Michelin in or out of any infringement of rights. But are the situations comparable, 1940 Nazi Germany and 2004 Israel. Oh yes, yes. Look, I am in all the time in contact with Israel. And I'm getting and I know about how they are killing people. What they did, why they uh, destroy houses. They want the Palestinians to get out of what they call Greater Israel. They wouldn't mind to keep a few if they agree to be slaves and work for cheap. I don't see any difference between a Jew and an Arab. They are both people. Some of them I like, some of them I don't like. But in my view, they both have to be treated like I want to be treated.
we are very worried when he produced it in Michelin and started writing letters, uh, lawyers. And Michelin is a rather powerful organization, have enough money to go to any lengths that they want to. Uh, we, we, try to we try to persuade them to, to write back to Michelin uh, with an appeasing letter. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't take, he wouldn't take a lawyer to, to uh, fight his case. He wanted the publicity. He wanted the worst, the worst speech land will throw at him. It's the first time I have been in an English court. And I don't know much how to, what is going to happen and how to behave. So, well, I will see what happens. I have the court will not start before 11, so I have to be there before 11. I did not think that they will take me to court. Michelin is a big company. Why do they have against me? I am not making any money out of it. And if I do something, I do actually, I give them a good name because I put them on the right side, on the humanitarian side. I am trying not to live in a confusion with myself. If you say to people that you are for justice, you must fight for this justice, even if it deprives you from some pleasures. My view on the world is, once I thought I helped to make it better, but it's not true. It is worse as it was. Thank you very much indeed. I don't mind at all if soon I will die. I think I'm not going to miss anything. Because for me, and I told you this before, life is not a cherry pie. There is more agony in life than anything else. And I am one of the few people who were really lucky. You see, I never starved. I always had enough. I was successful in what I did. Not many people can say this. So you see, and if I am such a pessimist, 
maybe that's why people I mean people are telling them that life is wonderful you open the television everyone is laughing smiling maybe this is what people want to hear that not everything is gloomy but I don't need it